Right, um, this one's going to be about the unification of the strong and weak nuclear forces. Um, two of the four fundamental forces. Um, I've already done one about gravity, explaining that gravity is an attractive force observed without its opposite and neutral potentials. Um, there's three forces in the universe, attractive, repulsive and neutral, and gravity is talking about one of them and disregarding the other two. But we've got to look at the strong and weak nuclear forces. Uh, basically, the strong force is within the atomic nucleus, or assumed to be within the atomic, the atomic nucleus. Um, the point being, if you get two magnets of the same polarity, okay, you try and put them together, they don't go together, do they? You know, when they, you, like this, that means that like charges repel. So, if you get two positive charges, they repel each other usually. Uh, classically speaking, should we say? Well, this is the classic theory on it anyway. Um, the same with two neutrons as well. Photons and neutrons in the atomic nucleus is what we're talking about here. So, two protons, two positive charges should repel each other, or so we think anyway. Um, and two neutrons um, should repel each other too because they're both neutral charges, so they should repel. Um, but they don't. In some, well, in, in some cases, a lot of cases, they, they don't. And the point being with the atomic structure is we get more than one proton in the atomic nucleus, more than one um, neutron as well in the nucleus. So uh, basically, the physicist invented something called the weak force and the strong force. Uh, the strong force is thought to be the binding principle within the atomic nucleus, so they thought, well, these like charges are the same should be repelling, but they're not, so there must be something holding them together, which seems perfectly logical, doesn't it? Um, that's, that was called the strong nu nuclear force. Um, it sounds really scary, doesn't it, nuclear force? But all it means is there's something holding some positive charges together in a, <laughs> in a glowing ball of light, basically. That's all it means. It's really, really simple to see it, you know? So, normally they should be, should be going apart, but they're not, they're together. Protons, neutrons, and the nucleus, okay? Really, really simple. We've got the strong force, which is thought to bind the atomic nucleus together, the protons and neutrons, nucleons, they're called, if you want to group them together. Uh, and then you've got the weak force, which, surprisingly, is the opposite to the strong force. It's thought to be a lot weaker than the electromag electromagnetic force or interaction, which is another topic I'm going to talk about in another, another video. Um, which is the third, well, the, I suppose the third fundamental force on this video, so we've done gravity. Anyway, so we've got the strong force which binds and the weak force which breaks them apart. Um, we need to unify these with gravity and electromagnetism. <laughs> but it's really, really simple, you see. But this, this one is specifically about the strong and weak for nuclear forces, okay? So the strong force holds things together, the weak force break things, breaks things apart, there's also a nuclear um, force that is neutral. Okay, a neutral nuclear force as well. There's three forces, attractive, repulsive and neutral, the same as gravity, the same as everything else in the universe. There's one thing, the opposite to that, and the point between two opposites which is neutral. This goes for everything, all physics, all mathematics, science, philosophy. It doesn't matter what, this, this is what the universe is made of, and this is the potentials that we will find within the universe when we look at it, literally and simply, okay? So, all that's happened with the strong weak nuclear forces is, we've missed one, we've missed the neutral nuclear force. It's not surprising that we've missed the nuclear force that's neutral, because neutrality can only exist between two opposites in a sense, so pure, absolute neutrality, if there is such a thing. If you, if, you see what I mean? We're talking about nothing here. We've missed, we've missed the potential for nothing, if you see what I'm saying. But there is a potential for nothing, because there's a centre right here. So that's nothing, that's right in the centre. You don't talk about your middle very often, do you? You talk about your left or your right all the time, you know, go left, go right. But it's not very often when you say, go straight on. Straight ahead or straight down the middle of your body, whatever it is, you see. So that's what we're missing with the nuclear forces. Strong weak nuclear forces need to have a neutral force added to them in order to be unified. And it's really simple. I mean, what you, what's Stephen Hawking going to say? You're wrong. When I'm claiming to be wrong, right and neutral simultaneously. I'm not doing this to be awkward or annoying. 
I'll admit, I'm a pedant, okay? I'm a pedant, fair play. But, this, I'm doing this because I want to talk about the truth. I'm not, I'm not trying to sort of have a go at anything here, any other theories. I'm just saying that, look, if you really, really think about it, mate, you know, then this is what happens. You get three potentials, and that's the strong weak nuclear forces. They're just missing a, a neutral potential within them. So, if we have a nuclear force that's neutral as well, then we unify the strong weak nuclear forces. Simple. Um, if we want to take it a step further, I think about enough time on this video anyway. If we want to take it a step further, then uh, you'd say, well, protons, like charges, they always repel. Well, that's a singular thing to say, isn't it? That's a singularity. They always repel. That implies something unchanging. We know for a fact that according to pro theory, there's three changes simultaneously possible, okay? So like charges don't always repel. They might repel 90% of the time, just for a random example. Um, they might repel more than they attract, but they've still got the theoretical possibility to attract or be neutral as well. In the same way that gravity is seen as always attractive, but it's also theoretically got the potential to be repulsive or neutral as well. Whether it is repulsive or neutral, when we happen to look at gravity or the strong wing nuclear forces, is somewhat irrelevant really, because this pro theory is about everything. And there's, there's three potentials within every single thing. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to explain through these videos, is specifically that there is three potentials, and that, that's it. It's really, really, really simple. Um, the next one I'm going to do probably is electromagnetism um, at a later date. I mean, to be honest, I've, I've got to refresh myself on electromagnetism a bit, really. Um, I'm going to re-record the Navier-Stokes equations as well. Um, but this is about strong weak nuclear forces. Really, really simple. Missing a neutral. That's all it is. Um, what I was saying about the protons, the neutrons, always repulsing each other. It obviously isn't true, is it? Or they wouldn't be in the, nu the atomic nucleus. Do you see what I mean? It's really, really simple. So sometimes they attract, sometimes they repulse, and sometimes they're neutral. Simple as that. Absolutely simple as that. And that's the strong weak nuclear forces unified.